we are nearing the end of the year and so far I am really happy with the dividends I got. When I was new to investing, which was in 2019, I only got a measly 161.55 pesos worth of dividends, which wasn't even enough to survive. Though it was a given because most of the companies I bought were past their ex-dividend date, but this didn't stop me from consistently investing. From 161 to 8,700 to 43,081 pesos in 2021, which was an average monthly income of 3,590. I was so happy back then to finally feel my dividends. And now in 2022, it has grown to 68,605 pesos, which is an average of 5,733 a month. And it doesn't stop there. Three of my holdings have already announced their payout in December, which are LTG, Emread, and Globe. This will increase my monthly dividend income to more than 6,000 pesos a month. My goodness, this is already enough to pay our electricity bill at home. Now although dividend investing is a slow process, but it sure is exciting to earn that amount without even breaking a sweat. So I will just continue investing in great companies to let that dividend snowball effect run its course and eventually grow to a sizable amount that will be enough for me to say to myself, I am already financially free. Though it's still a long way to go, it's better than just leaving my money lying around in my bank account, earning little to nothing at all, which is what most people are doing here in the Philippines. By the way, if you haven't watched my video about why a lot of Filipinos are poor, I suggest you watch it. Anyway, for November, my invested money has grown to 1,539,900 and with the market slightly recovering, my total return is now 9.09% or 140,003 pesos. This is with the Philippine market still at a negative 18.33%. And for FM ETF, which is our only available ETF that tracks the index, it's at a negative 15.77%. Now I don't know where things are headed. If you've watched my videos, I really don't care about that. Predicting the market is a waste of time. What I only look at is how the companies I hold are doing and the potential companies that I will be buying in the future. Now I bought a lot of stocks in November, namely Mega World Read, Double Dragon Read, Phil Invest Land, and Costco. And I added more shares to my two largest holdings, Mega World and LTG. Now I want to talk about why I keep on buying Mega World and Mread. I believe in a company's future growth, and their earnings had been growing steadily over the years. The only time they had a negative growth was during the pandemic, which was a given because of all the lockdowns that happened in the Philippines. And it wasn't only Mega World that was affected; all real estate companies as well. Phil Invest, one of my holdings, suffered the same. But now we can see Mega World is almost near its pre-pandemic earnings. And what I also like, they have increased their payout over the years. Although they don't have a high dividend yield, but since the price right now has dropped significantly, it now has more than 2% yield. And just by looking at their price valuation, the P-E ratio is only at 5.2. Price to book is at a very low 0.3, which means I am buying the company's assets at a huge discount. This makes it more attractive for me, though in the short term things don't look good in terms of its stock price, but the company's fundamentals are solid. Connecting it to the read, M read, since I like Mega World's fundamentals and the read has a good dividend yield, of course I'd be investing in it as well. As for LTG, same thing, their earnings have climbed over the years and even during the pandemic they maintained a good revenue, even though their bank holding was affected a lot and as I've said in my previous portfolio update, I like investing in holding companies because just by buying one company, I get to hold a lot of businesses already. And for LTG, their businesses are solid. As for my DDMPR holding, I also believe in the long-term stability of the company. Though it's not that popular compared to its competitors, its financials are good as well, which is important as my strategy is to just hold this company for a long time to get dividends. And right now, DDMPR is trading at a very low price, which makes its dividend yield more attractive. As for Costco, I discuss how I love their businesses. SNR, Pure Gold, these are the places I always go to when it comes to our groceries, and their financials are solid as well. Earnings have climbed up over the years, their debt is managed very well, and their dividend yield, although not that high, is still pretty okay. So from a long-term perspective, it's a good hold for me. So although I am focusing more on dividend investing, I am still mixing it up with companies that don't pay that much. But for me, if the company continues to grow like Mega World, eventually their yield would also increase. 
making it a good source of dividends as well, and as long as I reinvest every dividend I get, this would increase more my portfolio's dividend yield every year. Anyway, for my portfolio distribution, LTG and Megaworld still takes up the largest share, followed up by Aboides and DNL. Now these two companies I like a lot, but now their price has increased so I could no longer buy them. But let's see. Now my other stocks have less than 6% share, grouping it by sector, holding companies take up the largest share with 29%, followed up by real estate at 17%, and banks at 16%. Now if we expand this more, this is how it will look. I'm quite happy that my portfolio is spread over different industries. This way, even if one industry is affected and they cut their dividends, then I would still get a good amount from other industries and I could reinvest the dividends I got in those companies that were affected, buying those companies at a discount, which is a win-win situation for me, even with the negative event. This happened during the pandemic. Though my real estate holding cut their dividends, other companies like DMZ, LTG, and other banks boosted my dividend income, which then I reinvested into the cheapest companies in my portfolio. By the way, if you're curious as to where I get all of the data I'm showing, this is from Simply Wall Street. If you want to try it out, they have a forever free basic plan and if you sign up using my link, you get a 14-day free trial of all their platform's features from stock analysis, portfolio tracking, and a lot more. And if you do avail their plan using my link, you get a 30% discount. So level up your investing journey with Simply Wall Street. Anyway, another thing I'd like to talk about since a lot has asked me about this, do I invest in crypto? Well, to answer that, no, I don't invest in any cryptocurrency. As to why, well, my investing principle is value investing, which I then mix with dividend investing, which I call now dividend value investing. So with that, I invest in companies that have good fundamentals that I know would last for a long time and give me consistent dividends every year. So for crypto, I don't know how to evaluate it. There are no fundamentals I can look at, so how will I even able to analyze it if it's undervalued or not? It doesn't make sense to me, that's why I don't invest in it, and I think would never invest in it in the future. Because for me, the fundamentals of the company are what matters, especially for dividend investors. Just imagine if the company's stock price falls, I won't even panic because the company is still the same, they are still earning consistently, and are still going to pay me dividends. There is something I can look at. But for crypto, there isn't anything like that. I will just be hoping that it will again be hyped. It doesn't even give me dividends. There are no fundamentals to back it up. Just the hope that it will one day be a stable currency. So the bottom line is, I can't see how I would even evaluate it. With that, why would I even invest in it? It may be different for you. Maybe you have a way to evaluate it or you see its potential in the future. Each investor's view is different. This is just my thought about it. I just believe what Warren Buffett always says. Invest in your circle of competence, you won't go wrong with it, and it's much easier, which is better for my mental well-being. This then helps me to last long in investing, which for me is the best strategy. Long-term investing is the way to go. I don't like putting my trust in hype or what some YouTuber or what this random guy is saying. I want to put my money on the things I can analyze well and the things I am comfortable holding. So anyway, find a strategy you can continue doing for a long time. For me. The stress-free way of investing is the way to go. Actually, I am only active in investing when earnings are released, but this is made easy using Simply Wall Street. It gives me a notification every time earnings and dividends are released. Also, I update my watch list every year to update my buy below price. That's it. It's that easy. I want a strategy that a lazy person can do for a long time. So this ends my portfolio update for this month. So if you still haven't clicked the like button, then I'd appreciate it if you do so before leaving. And check out my other videos as well. Thank you and see you in the next video.